Welcome to number two in the We Are series, uh, which I've been sharing with uh, a number of churches around the world. It's my great pleasure and privilege uh, to do so. In the first in the series, uh, we looked at this theme that we are apostolic, you are sent. And in this second, we are going to uh, look at we are family, you are belong. Uh, this phrase has been attached to the church, the word family, um, for 2,000 years, quite rightly so. Uh, at times it has meant absolutely the very depth of what it, it says, that we are family, we're a family church. But to be honest, at other times it's probably just been more of a title that's used. The history of the church is very much, especially in Europe, where the parish church was the centre of the local community, the family, the place where people had their babies christened, got married, and of course were laid to rest. The very heart of the community. But what does it really mean? What does it mean to you to be a part of family? For me, the very definition of the church is uh, something along these lines, that we are sent, as we had a look at last time, from heaven uh, to earth. And through family, we are sent out to expand the influence of the king. Another phrase that I use is that uh, the, the definition of the church should really be a place where people encounter God and become a part of a family and are trained and equipped to bring train change and transformation to their world. We are family and you belong. It's the very center for me of the church. It is the, the place where we gather, the place where we belong, the place where we get healed up, the place where we celebrate and are celebrated, the place where we are trained, where we are equipped, we are fed, and sometimes where we are healed up and restored and of course, ultimately, the place that we will come to when we first find Jesus as our Lord. It's so important to me that we keep the very essence, the very heartbeat of family at the centre of what the church is. I believe that heaven's government is relational. Heaven's government is family, that from the beginning of the word of God, right the way through to the end, it is really a masterpiece of a relational textbook. So many wonderful verses we read, don't we? That he places um, the fatherless uh, in a family. He places the orphans in a family. He places the widows in a family. That's what he wants to do. In other words, he takes people who don't have family and he puts them into a family. So much of our language, of course, as well is about the relationships of family. We experience, don't we, the spirit of sonship, one of the great pictures of the family. And that beautiful verse in Ephesians that says, from whom every family on earth derives its name. And so this is really, really important for us to understand. And perhaps there's never been a more important or appropriate time to talk about this subject, this being a family, being at the centre of what the church is all about. For quite a long time now, I have talked about the fact that we could get nearly everything online that we used to uh, be able to get when we went to meetings. And of course, now in this last year or so of the pandemic, we have met face to face, haven't we? The fact that the two things that we can't have in the same way as we used to, are the corporate experience of the presence of God together and the face-to-face -face experience and relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're hungry. We're hungry to get back, I'm sure. I know different ones of us are having different experiences uh, of, you know, meeting together, of, of being together. And some are still on quite intense uh, lockdowns as we are here in the UK and others have got some flexibility but the truth is that all of us, I expect, have increased 
our value for and our desire to be with people in the same room. Uh, I sometimes think that I don't know whether I want to go back to church to listen to a long preacher. I just want to go back and and uh, and worship and just sit around with people and pray for each other and receive prayer and be encouraged and be an encourager. Uh, and I know that there, of course, is always the place uh, for preaching and for teaching. It's so vital and so important. But I have a feeling for a while I'd just be happy just to be in the room. And so we are family. The church is family. I gave a definition a while ago that home is actually an address in the heart. Um, it, it, it's about shared covering. It's about the physical and spiritual, emotional covering and connection where there's a shared commitment uh, of everyone in the house to see a, a future vision and to play a part in seeing that fulfilled And I just want to unpack a few things. I just want to encourage you. I want to identify some places where we can find our connection. And uh, some of you who know me won't be surprised um, to see uh, a quadrant there. You know, some of the questions around this uh, that I'd want to ask are, are we connected? Do we belong? Do we share a future? Are we secure? These are questions that I hope and believe that your church can and will answer more and more positively in the coming weeks and months. And that's why I put this as the second um, of this series, the We Are series. We are family. And family is a beautiful thing. Uh, You know, we don't all have to be the same to be in family. We don't actually choose our family. Um, Our family kind of chooses us in a way. And that's why it's such a beautiful illustration. There will be challenges. There will be disagreements. There will be different points of view. But we must get this because we are family. The word of God says we are members of the royal household. We're, We're members of this beautiful, amazing royal family. And so I just want to check through a few, I believe, key points about this. One of the most important things for me is that we we really understand this. We really get hold of this and we really engage with being heaven's royal family. You know, the church is really, in many respects, the local government office of heaven. Um, but it's not a government office that's organized through election. It's a government office that's organized through relationship. And the work of Jesus on the cross gives us the privilege of being members of this family. I I love to play around with a couple of words, the words righteousness and justice. You know, I think many of us in the years gone by have heard the word righteousness and had in our mind a list of rules that we have to somehow keep. And that justice is what happens to us when we break the rules. But I have some good news for you. Righteousness is actually an invitation to be in right standing with the Father. And actually it's said that Jesus imputed to us his righteousness when he died on the cross. And here's the the definition for me of justice. Justice is everything you need to accept the invitation because we are lined up relationally through Jesus on the cross with the exact standard. You see, when you are justified, you are lined up with the edge of the page. That's what happens on your computer. When you left justify your text, it's lined up. Well, we got justified. We got lined up with the original standard, the original relational standard. And because of that, we're family. We're sons and daughters. We're going to have a look at that in a lot more detail. Um, Actually, I think in the last of this series of six. But for now, we are family. Are you asking a question? Am I connected? Do I belong? Do I share a future? Am I secure? You know, your family, your church family won't be perfect. I'm sure that your natural family isn't perfect. But it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. We are 
family and you belong. Let's have a look at the first one of these. We have a shared origin and identity. Just uh, pause for a minute and think of the big family, because as I go through these, I'm going to be thinking of the big family, the whole family of God on earth, all of us. And then just challenging you about your local family, our shared origin and identity, because we are members of heaven's royal family. Our shared identity, you know, I often will use the, uh, the little description. I say when we look at adoption from earth standards, we typically will think of the abandoned child being rescued and being adopted, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when we receive the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, three things happen. I compare it to the daughter-in-law. The first is we fall in love. The second is we take on the family name, the shared identity. And thirdly, we become joint heirs, just like a daughter-in-law does. You see, we have a shared identity, the, the global family of Christians. We have a shared identity and a shared origin. Isn't that wonderful? You know, I, I sometimes look at some of the division that, that so often happens in the church and it, it saddens me. And I, I dream of, of more and more unity and more and more connection. And unity doesn't mean equality. Unity really, it really happens when we recognise that we have a shared identity and origin. One of the phrases I like to use is that the closer you get to the front line of battle, the less your differences matter. You will just want to know, does the person on my left or on my right believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Saviour, that there is one Lord, one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God and Father of us all. We have a shared origin and identity and you and your local church will have that too. As you gather together, you have that shared sense of family, of connection to the mission and the vision of that family. It's one of the beautiful things that happens in family. So we have a shared origin and identity. You might just want to check that. You might just want to review how much you love being a part of your local church family. And then the second is we have a shared connection and value. This is so, so important that we understand this. When, when I think about the global church, and again, it's so easy to, to think about uh, places where there are reasons to disagree or to divide, but the real challenge and the real invitation for us to all is to look for and find the places where we unite our shared connection and value. One of my favourite stories uh, about this was that I was teaching a school a couple of years ago and I was uh, sharing uh, something of my teaching around communion. And it's a very simple illustration that I use. But Jesus, on that wonderful Last Supper, that night before he was betrayed, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And that picture struck me and always will because I have actually in my office a very large wine glass. And in that large wine glass, I have a Bible. In other words, all of this is in here. The whole Old Testament and New Testament is in the cup. And I was sharing this and I had two uh, Roman Catholic priests in the meeting and a wonderful man. And we developed a, a beautiful relationship with them. And I was uh, just getting ready to uh, share the Holy Communion. I'd actually said to them, if it's if it's awkward for you uh, to participate, I won't be offended. I, I know that sometimes there are restrictions uh, put on people. And they said, oh, no, no, nothing of the sort. In fact, we would like to share communion with you. And so they came up and they sat with me 
And then one of them told me a story that I will never forget as long as I live. He said, Paul, he said, the day that I was priested, I think was the word he used. I was given a chalice and the chalice was engraved. It was given to me and somebody had had it engraved. And at the very bottom of the chalice, the first verse of the Bible was engraved in Latin. And he said there on the rim of the chalice was engraved the last verse of the Bible as a picture that all of this is in the cup. Oh my, what a place of connection we shared that day with communion as we connected and as we grew in, in great value, honour and respect for each other at that most wonderful and unforgettable moment. And in our local church, it's just important that we realise that we have this opportunity to have a, a sense of shared connection because we're members of family. You know what it's like, don't you? You meet somebody from from your stream or even your church somewhere else in the world, out of context, and there is this immediate sense of connection. I have that with people who've been to Bethel and the School of Ministry there. I'll meet them somewhere else in the world. And immediately we have this point of connection, telling stories, talking about the people we know and the people we respect and our favourite speakers and preachers and revival group pastors. And we can do that. I do that with churches that I've been to over the years where I meet somebody who was with me in that church years ago. And that sense of connection pops up. I want to encourage you. Let's live that in the here and in the now. Let's celebrate being connected to each other. That shared sense of connection and of value for each other. Another way of describing it would be honour. Uh, my definition of honour is the recognition of the glory in another. When I recognise your being made in the image of God quality. Whoever you are, whatever you do, I'm honouring you. I'm putting a value on you because you know this, Jesus died because you are worth it, not because you're worth less, which means that when Jesus died, he honoured you. Shared commitment and value and then shared purpose and commitment. Perhaps in your church, you have a mission statement, a vision statement there on the wall perhaps it's read out well we have a shared purpose and commitment both globally and locally because we're family aren't we our shared commitment the the great commission go into all the world is is such a beautiful purpose and we have a shared purpose don't we to make him known to make jesus known what a wonderful privilege and Habakkuk 2 14 says the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God we have a shared purpose and I hope that you have a sense of a shared commitment to that purpose it will look different if you're a doctor a teacher a pastor a prophet a homeschool mum a scientist an engineer but you can still have that same sense of shared purpose and a commitment to that. And the same in our local churches. It's, it's wonderful to watch different people demonstrating their commitment to the mission, the vision, the purpose of their local church. I hope you are doing that. I've seen some extraordinary examples during this pandemic of the way that people are serving in, in food banks and in other ways, making sure that the family is cared for in this unusual season. A shared sense of commitment and purpose. Have a look perhaps at your vision statement of your church and just ask yourself, how am I serving that? In what ways am I demonstrating my commitment to my family? Of course, there are many ways, of course, including giving and, and tithing to the church, but there are so many ways in which we can do this. We're family. We have a shared origin and identity, a shared connection and value for each other, a shared purpose and commitment to each other, and lastly, a shared future and dreams. I was privileged as 
most of you probably know, to live in the United States of America for 15 years. There are so many things about America that I absolutely love. And one of my favorites is that it has a culture of dreams. I know that because Americans have an American dream. And to be honest, many other countries don't have their own dream. And yet a culture of dreams, even if you might not think the dream is a great idea, but a culture of dreams, a, a culture of believing that there is something ahead of us is absolutely biblical. You see, we have a shared future and dreams as the global church. Yes, we do. The whole earth, as I've already said, will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Isn't that a beautiful picture? And for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It's a promise of revival. It's a promise of multitudes coming into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, becoming members of the family, the global family. We have a shared future and we can dream together, can't we? Jesus promised us abundant life. He promised us that we would do the greater works. He promised us that there would be no end to the increase of his government. He promised us peace on earth. He promised us that we would go from glory to glory. And the psalmist said that thy ways may be known in all the earth. We have a shared future and we dream together. I want to encourage you in your local church family to embrace the future, to embrace the vision, to embrace the things that are said. Perhaps a prophet has come uh, through your church and has left a great prophetic word about the impact of your church on the region, the town, the village, the city, the nation. Embrace it. Own it as yours because we have an opportunity to have a shared future and shared dreams and it is so powerful. One of the keys to change and we're in the business of change. An apostolic family as I like to call the church is in the business of change. We've been sent from heaven to earth and through family, through this apostolic family, sent out to expand the influence of the king into every area, every sphere of influence in our great planet. In other words, to bring change. And the key to change is ownership. That's why it's so important that all of us really do embrace our local church family. There will be many different ways of expressing that. Perhaps it's membership, perhaps it's giving of money, but in, in every respect, it is gathering together these four points, realizing that we have a shared origin and identity, and the realizing that we have a shared connection and value for each other, a, a shared purpose and commitment and a shared future and dreams. I want to challenge you today on behalf of your leaders who've asked me to you know, send them the message. They didn't know that I was going to say this, but I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today to make sure that you are committed to your local church family, that you are finding ways of demonstrating that, of showing everybody that you're committed, attending, giving, serving, praying for, believing for what God has placed your church on the earth for. I love the church. And Jesus said he would build it. He said more than that. He said the gates of hell, no opposition will stand against it. That's what he said. Isn't that wonderful? And you and I have the privilege of being members of the global Christian family and members of a local Christian family. And we've been missing it a lot just lately. But, you know, while we wait to get back, and I don't know that we are going to get back to normal. I think there's going to be a new and wonderful and fresh, exciting normal. I think actually there is going to be a new awareness of these four points, a new sense of shared origin and identity as we realize how much we missed our brothers and sisters. And then an increased awareness of our value for being connected and our value for each other and how much we missed having these other people in our lives and seeing them week by week 
And that is going to lead to an increased commitment to the purpose of our local church family. And I believe that we're going to start to dream some big dreams and realize that together, as we come back together with a greater value for being in the room together and a greater value for experiencing the presence of God together, we're going to start to dream some big dreams. We are family and you, you belong. And you know, we really need each other. And I, as we close, want to encourage you. This is how family is strengthened. Family is strengthened when we stand together. I don't know whether you've been through a, a crisis, a sickness, a tragedy, but there's nothing like the family standing with you. Some of you might have heard my message about the postures of the Christian life. And uh, I challenged you in that. Who are you standing with? Let's stand together. It strengthens us when we stand together. And then when we hope together, that strengthens us. Sometimes that comes out of the crisis as we perhaps pray for somebody who's sick or we pray for somebody who has infertility. As we hope together, we get strengthened together. I love the picture in Romans chapter 5 where it says, Rejoice in our tribulations knowing that tribulations produce perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not disappoint. When we hope together, it strengthens us. And when we share our sorrows together, this has been a tough season. So many have, have suffered so much in this season through COVID and actually through other tragedies that have been much harder because of COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns. But I want to encourage you, when we share our sorrows, it strengthens us. And finally, when we celebrate together, it strengthens us. I believe that this is a great, great time to really invest in being family, to really realise what a privilege it is to be members of the global family of God and the local family of God, to realise how much we have. As we, as we realise how much we've missed each other, let's make sure that when we do start to come back together, that we don't forget too quickly how we've missed each other. And let's really commit to make a difference. Let's really commit to play our part in our local church family and, as we have the opportunity, our global church family. Let's stand together. Let's hope together. Let's share our sorrows together and let's celebrate together and let's be strengthened. Let's become what Jesus always intended us to become, the bride of Christ. He's coming back for a bride, you know. He's coming back for a family. We're going to a wedding, not an election. We're going to a wedding. We're going to the greatest celebration of family there has ever been. And right now, we get the opportunity for a great dress rehearsal. We are family and you belong. I want it to be true of every one of us that we are seen, known, valued and loved. And all of us can play a part in that. Father, I ask that in this season, you would release such a great experience of family globally and locally that we truly do become the picture to the world of the bride of Christ, that we become so beautiful, so radiant, so attractive that millions want to become a part of the family. We are family. You belong. May God truly bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.